Hello, I'm Dr. Anna Dorszewska, consultant in metabolic bone diseases in Liverpool. I'm terribly sorry that due to unforeseen circumstances, unfortunately, I won't be able to join you at the Paget's information event in York. That's why I have pre-recorded this talk. This is the outline of my talk. First, uh, I'll give you some background about normal bone. Then we'll discuss um, Paget's disease of bone and finally uh, causes of Paget's disease of bone. It goes without saying that bone is very important. It supports the body, it aids our movement, it protects internal organs such as uh, the brain in the skull and the heart and lungs in the rib cage. Um, it houses the bone marrow where blood cells are produced and it is the main store of minerals such as calcium and phosphate. And finally, it also produces hormones that regulate those minerals. To perform these diverse functions, bone has to be dynamic and be able to renew itself to remain healthy over the life course. Bone renewal takes place in small areas within the skeleton in the so-called bone remodeling units, which are depicted here in pink. And this is a long process. It takes about 10 years for the human skeleton to completely renew itself. This is possible due to the action of two types of bone cells, which we can see under the microscope, osteoclasts, an example of which you see on the left, the red cell, and osteoblasts on the right is the blue cell. The osteoclasts resolve bone, whereas osteoblasts form bone, and their action is completely balanced in healthy bone, which means that the amount of resolved bone equals the amount of formed bone in health. Bone remodeling also allows for bone repair. Like any tissue with time, bone can suffer some wear and tear. Damaged bone is removed by the action of osteoclasts, which secrete powerful chemicals, such as hydrochloric acid, which dissolves mineral. This allows for osteoblasts to lay new bone, which then undergoes mineralization and all returns to normal. So what is Paget's disease of bone? Paget's disease of bone has been named after Sir James Paget, an eminent Victorian surgeon and physician who described this condition in 1876, after he had encountered a 46-year-old gentleman from the north of England who presented to him with aches and pains, and over the years developed significant bowing deformities of his long bones. And indeed, his skull also increased in size, uh, such that he had to change the size of his hat. And because uh, of the bony pain and swelling and increased warmth, Sir James Paget thought this was chronic uh, inflammation of bones, or osteitis deformans in Latin. And this is a photograph of the first patient of Sir James Paget. And can appreciate the significant bowing deformities of his shin bones and also of his thigh bones. However, nowadays we know that in fact Paget's disease is not due to bone inflammation, but it is due to focally increased and disorganized bone remodeling. So if we look again at our skeleton, which uh, is undergoing bone remodeling or bone renewal, now we focus our attention on the right shin bone, where the arrow indicates, um, we'll see that in Paget's disease, this remodeling gets out of control. And this can progress down uh, the, the shin bone and cause bone swelling and deformity. When we look under the microscope at the pagetic bone, we see a lot of osteoclasts. And these osteoclasts are uh, not only increasing in number, but also in size, and they contain many more nuclei than normal osteoclasts, and they are also much more active than normal osteoclasts, so they resolve much more bone. And then 
when the osteoblasts come along, they come along in a haphazard way and they lay new bone too quickly and basically do a rush job. And although they form a lot of bone, um, it has an abnormal structure and it is weaker. And this activity, this ongoing activity, can lead to a lot of pain, increased warmth, swelling and deformity. On this x-ray taken from the literature, you see Paget's disease affecting uh, the right tibia. You see this affected right tibia on the left-hand side on the of the slide, uh, indicated by the red arrow. And you can appreciate that uh, the tibia or the shin bone is highly abnormal. So it has a thickened cortex, it has a so-called coarse trabecular pattern, and it is enlarged, and this leads to a deformity. And you can compare, of course, the affected uh, right tibia with the unaffected left tibia. So Paget's disease is characterized by focal increased bone turnover or bone remodeling, uh, which is driven by abnormal osteoclasts. And we see this uh, here on this biopsy taken from a patient with Paget's disease, where uh, the osteoclasts, um, indicated by the blue arrows, um, are digging avidly into the bone, which is this dense pink tissue. And they are followed by a string of osteoblasts. Paget's disease favours the axial and weight-bearing bones, um, and we can uh, see this uh, well on this isotope bone scan of a patient affected with Paget's disease. So here, typically, we see the Paget's disease occurring in the vertebrae, in the pelvis, in the whole of the right femur, in the proximal left femur, but also uh, in uh, the shoulder blade and also um, in the skull. Paget's disease is more common after the age of 55 and it affects slightly more males than females. Uh, it is common in the northwest with a hotspot in Lancashire. It can lead to many complications. We already spoke about deformities. Deformities um, affecting the joint line can cause secondary osteoarthritis as seen here. So this is a severely affected tibia with a severe bowing deformity encroaching on the ankle joint and causing osteoarthritis. And as mentioned, pagetic bone is much weaker and it can easily break. And we can see here a pathological fracture through the femur affected by Paget's disease. It is also associated with deafness if it affects the skull. So here we see a skull x-ray of a patient with Paget's disease, uh, so-called cotton wool appearance. And you can see the difference between the normal skull x-ray seen here in the bottom. And indeed, uh, there is some evidence to suggest that Beethoven may have suffered from Paget's disease, which affected his hearing at a relatively young age. The diagnosis of Paget's disease may be suggested by a isolated elevation of alkaline phosphatase, which is an enzyme produced by osteoblasts, and it is detected in a simple blood test. An X-ray, of course, can pick Paget's disease of bones and uh, an isotope bone scan. In clinical practice, uh, usually all three tests are indicated to diagnose and assess the activity and extent of Paget's disease. So what causes Paget's disease of bone? I'm afraid there is no straight answer to this question. We know that genetic factors can play an important role because family history is common, ethnic differences occur, and uh, a number of mutations have been found to be associated with Paget's disease. On the other hand, the environment may play a role uh, as well, and historically viruses have been implicated, mechanical stress, poor nutrition in childhood, and even pollution. 
And finally, a combination of uh, these factors or even other factors that uh, can influence the gene function without changing the genetic makeup may play a role as well. And these are called epigenetic factors. In the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic, viruses, of course, deserve a special place. Reassuringly, the coronavirus has not been implicated in Paget's disease. However, other viruses have, such as uh, the measles virus or the um, canine distemper virus and others. Those viruses belong to a different family of viruses known as paramyxoviridae or paramyxovirus family. And this came about in the 70s when scientists uh, using very powerful microscopes discovered inclusions in uh, the pagetic osteoclast seen here on the left. And those inclusions contained very densely packed tubular structures which resembled viruses. However, when we looked at inclusions uh, which are definitely caused by viruses uh, seen in brain cells in a very serious com um, complication of measles, um, which can cause brain inflammation, um, known as subacute sclerosis and panencephalitis, we see that those viruses um, are completely different. Those structures are quite loosely packed um, and not as stiff uh, in appearance. And there are other difficulties, um, many other difficulties with the viral uh, theory. Suffice to say, it is still controversial. Another environmental factor implicated in Paget's disease is mechanical overloading of bones. This is based on anecdotal evidence again from the 70s. Uh, for example, the case of a billiard player who developed Paget's disease in his fingers, which is a very unusual sight. Or Paget's disease in the treadle machine operator who got the condition in the leg operating the machine, but not the other leg. Now we'll move on to the genetic factors. As mentioned, family history is common, and this is an example of a family pedigree where Paget was passed on from the grandmother through her children to her grandchildren, and the affected individuals are colored here in black. And it's been estimated that between 10 to 50% of patients uh, may have an affected relative. As I've said, ethnic differences in incidence persist after migration, and this is mostly evident in the Americas and South Africa, Australia and New Zealand, where the incidence of Paget's disease is higher in the descendants of the Anglo-Saxons as compared to the incidence in the indigenous population. And indeed, many genes have been uh, associated with Paget's disease, and those, uh, or most of those pagetic genes uh, regulate osteoclast function. Currently, the most important pagetic gene is sequestrum 1, also known as P62. And the most common mutation of the P62 gene linked to Paget's disease is the P392L mutation, which is frequently seen in familial cases and to a degree in sporadic cases as well. Importantly, we are now confident that this mutation can in fact induce Paget's disease, so we no longer talk about an association of the gene and disease, but a cause and effect. So to prove this, we developed a, a transgenic mouse model into which we introduced this mutation, or to be precise, the equivalent of the P3912L mutation in mouse, the P3914L mutation, because the mouse has a slightly longer P62 gene. And lo and behold, uh, with aging, this mutant mouse developed Paget's disease in the long bones, such as seen here, this bottom slide, uh, I hope you can appreciate the thickening of this femur. This is a micro CT scan uh, of the femur of, uh, of this mouse. And you can appreciate it perhaps more at the cross section, which you can see here in the middle, uh, where uh, it is really evident the, the thickening and the abnormal structure of this bone is really shown very clearly. And this settled the ongoing discussion in the field with regard to um, the role of genetic factors. 
There are, of course, many more genes um, associated with Paget's disease and related conditions. I summarise them here in this table. In fact, we currently think that a combination of these variants rather than one uh, particular gene may predispose to Paget's disease. Having said all that, it's not all doom and gloom, and there is some good news. In fact, Paget's disease is becoming less common and it is much milder nowadays. I've taken this graph from a recent paper by Cook and colleagues from the University of Manchester, and they've shown a 60% decline in the incidence of Paget's disease in the UK between 1999 and 2015, so over 16 years, which is really remarkable. However, they still show that the incidence is highest in the Northwest and in areas of greater deprivation. However, the fact that the change has uh, come about so quickly suggests that an environmental factor may have played a major role uh, rather than a genetic factor, which would take much longer to, to manifest itself. At the end of my talk, I want to mention the excellent uh, treatment that we have nowadays for Paget's disease. And this is thanks to the pioneering work of Professor Graham Russell and colleagues on bisphosphonates, which are now the gold standard for treatment of Paget's disease and also of osteoporosis. So just to remind you, in Paget's disease, osteoclasts are hyperactive and bisphosphonates, especially zelodroic acid, are able to wipe them completely out. And this enables relatively normal bone repair, although unfortunately they can't reverse any deformities already present. So I hope I've set the scene for my colleagues who will speak in great detail about the treatment for Paget's disease. So in summary, Paget's disease is a focal disorder of bone remodeling with a strong genetic predisposition. It may cause many complications. Thankfully, the incidence is declining and we have excellent treatment available, especially zolotronic acid. I hope you enjoyed my talk and thank you very much for your attention.